to the Scottish Classic Sports and Saloon Car Championship. Well, the guys are on track, and let's have a look at the grid just now. As we see a few of the cars just coming through Chicane, William Curry at the very back. But the grid as follows for these classics in very tricky, tricky conditions here. And over the top of Duffus comes Mario Ferrari. And, yeah, after qualifying, well, it was a John Kimmond on pole from Andrew Smith. Raymond Boyd, Mario Ferrari, Bruce Mitchell, William Conway, Stuart Thorburn, Martin Ramsey. We're ahead of Alistair Bapti in ninth place. Now, Bapti is a man who's going for a championship here. Then we've got Michael Longstaff, Kieran Bailey, Duncan O'Neill and William Curry making out the entire grid as we roll underneath the bridge. And that can only be a mini. That'll be William Conway we're on board with just now. And Alistair Bapti on our left-hand side. That's Bruce Mitchell, sorry, on our left-hand side. So, Bruce Mitchell... A very fast man. He's got the reliability there in that car as well now. It's just whether Bruce can be bothered to try and change the wet tyres or the dry tyres for wet tyres, which he has been a little bit slack on before as we get into a grid slot there. Front row of the grid. It's Rover against Morgan. We've got two lights, three lights, four lights and five lights. Oh, they've held him for a long, long time. Lights out and away we go down towards Hippen for the first time of asking. And it's going to be Morgan against Big Rover as we go on board once again. And look at the spray. You can see absolutely nothing ahead of us. Wipers now go on as we're going towards Hippen. Bruce Mitchell, that's Mario Ferrari going around the outside there. And as we look through the hairpin and out of the side window of the Mini, it does look like that is John Kinmond who leads as they head towards Clark Corner as we go on board and you can uh, you can see absolutely nothing from the ball of spray there but at the exit of Clark Corner is John Kimmond from Andrew Smith Boydie on the Porsche Hunt looking down the inside the Porsche the turbocharged one up the inside can he make that manoeuvre stick as we see Kieran Bailey going through at the back but it's John Kinmond in towards McIntyre second place yes Raymond Boyd ahead of Andrew Smith so the Porsche really works well in these damp, wet conditions as we come over the crest of Duffy's dip. John Kimmond likes a bit of oversteer in that car if you've ever actually watched him. Yeah, if you've ever noticed that, he does like to get that thing sideways as William Conway has Bruce Mitchell all over the back of him there. In fact, went round the outside of him at Duffy's dip. The little mini, awesome on the corners, but does struggle quite a bit on the actual long straights when it's needing to stretch his little legs as we go round the hairpin and already heading towards Clarks there goes the big Rover SD1 of John Kinmond chased hard by Raymond Boyd and Andrew Smith these three guys at the front and also Mario Ferrari these four cars all very fast and very able in the wet conditions as is Bruce Mitchell and now where's Alistair Bapt he's behind Stuart Thorburn there the Mark 1 escort of Stuart Thorburn in the Border Reavers colour Doom Blue as Stuart does call it and he has joked in the past to me but uh, Stuart looking very well in that car and ahead of the man who's going for the championship, Alistair Bapti, the way the points are working out this year, it looks like Bapti could be on for back-to-back -back Scottish Classic Sports and Saloons Championship here. Let's see exactly what happens as... Oh, look at that, the main straight change of position, the Porsche under attack from the Morgan Plus 8, Andrew Smith up the inside and has he got that manoeuvre done? Yes, he has. So a good manoeuvre from Andrew there as he goes through the corner and heads towards Clark Corner. Oh, Mario Ferrari has a, a bit of a, shall we say, moment going through the hairpin there. So much so that it was on the gravel on the left-hand side of the circuit on the way out as they head towards Clark Corner. Now John Kinman leads down the back straight as we go towards the chicane. There goes Mario Ferrari. He's managed to recover from that, um, recover from that little moment, shall we say as up over the crest of Butchers comes Kinman and that car already started to slide about that big rover. Raymond Boyd's just sliding off the back of Andrew Smith. Seeing as everybody seems to be sliding just now in these tricky conditions at Notka Racing Circuit. Smithy trying to get on the gas there as he come through the apex of Duffus and you can see the Morgan protesting under the right foot getting heavily abused as he now pops out from the slipstream. He's I don't think he's close enough to get past, but what Andrew Smith is trying to do there is make sure he's got clear visibility, clear vision. Remember, he has an open cockpit car, so he'll be getting lashed with all the spray and anything else that comes out the back of that big rover. You never know what it could be, but uh, Andrew Smith having to look through that as we go back on board with William Comey. That is Stuart Thorburn's beautiful, beautiful Mark 1 Escort there ahead of us. 
And William will be very respectful of that. And that is that Alistair Bapti. It is Bapti. The Bapti man goes past Conway on the exit of the hairpin. So finally, Alistair Bapti has woken up today. His qualifying was abysmal. His race start was terrible. And he's finally now clicked into gear. So that puts Bapti up into round about seventh place. He's still got to try and get a few more places if he can. As Kinman leads Smithy and Boydy onto the, the main street here. Now, Andrew Smith has now between a rock and a hard place as oh that makes a two's extremely slow oh that was so close terrifying Andrew Smith gets between the pit wall and William Curry there that was absolutely terrifying that Fiesta is so slow on the main street it must have some sort of mechanical issue as thankfully the leaders all get through there but all it takes is for one car to be unsighted with the spray of that car and let's not go there as the leaders come through the chicane, one, two, and three, yeah. Smith, uh, Andrew Smith has been kind of... Adrian Boyd's caught him back up because he can't get past John Kinman, and that really is affecting him now, because look at that. The blue Porsche is all over the back of the Plus 8 Morgan as John Kinman has huge, huge slides, leaving McIntyre's, and now crests the top of the hill and heads for another lap, Smith in his plus eight, Morgan pops out for the slipstream, this is a genuine bona fide overtaking move now, and look at that, they're almost three abreast on the run down towards the hip, and Smith's on the inside, Andrew Smith, can he make this manoeuvre stick, yes, Kinman snatches the back wheels on a downshift there, and just manages to hold that together, and Andrew Smith takes the lead as they leave the hairpin, and here comes Raymond Boyd, they're all ganging up on John Kinman now, as they head towards Clark Corner, can Raymond Boyd get alongside? Yes, he can. This is a brave manoeuvre from Raymond Boyd. If he can make that one stick, he's side by side. He takes a position on the way towards Clark's. That is big, big, brave stuff from Andrew Smith and Raymond Boyd there. John Kimmon loses two places in two corners, and he's now down to third place. He will be kicking himself over that one. But look at the pace that Andrew Smith has in that Morgan plus eight entered this weekend as a guest he won't be scoring championship points and he is absolutely flying he's got the bit well and truly between his teeth as Bruce Mitchell goes through shot and Alistair Bapti is now ahead of Stuart Thorburn so that puts Alistair Bapti into sixth place on the road and he has finally got it together here ahead of Thorburn and Conway Michael Longstaff was the next car through as well as we see Andrew Smith Morgan plus eight 3.9 litre engine, that's a big, big engine underneath the, the hood of that car. And it's been driven very well. There's another one that hangs about as well, in the shape of Tommy Gilmartin, and we know just how quick Tommy can drive his one. Bruce Mitchell flashes through from Bapti and Thorburn. Bruce Mitchell in Class CB, uh, the classic B class. And uh, Alistair Bapti's A class and Thorburn B class. So a bit of a battle between Mitchell and Thorburn. Although they've got Bapti in a different class in between them. As up the top of Butchers and McIntyre's goes Andrew Smith in the big plus eight Morgan. It really does look good on the road, doesn't it? It handles well. And it seems to look a little bit easier to drive than Raymond's Porsche. As Raymond comes through the top of Duffy's here, the big E-class Porsche. Since they've turbocharged that car, it's up to three litres now. Three litre turbocharged car. And the guys at SWR really have put that car together well, as that XR2 is still dreadfully slow in the middle of the racing line there. And it's still just going, barely at any pace though. As Duncan O'Neill is the other one who's just left here, and you can see a much faster XR2 as he gets going. We should also mention Martin Ramsey out here. Martin Ramsey also in the Fiesta STs. So, great to see Martin out there and Kieran Bailey. We haven't seen too much of those guys on track, but they are still out there and circulating. In fact, here's Kieran Bailey now. Kieran about to go lap down, and he makes it very, very easy for Andrew Smith there. Gives him a little wave, and in fact, Andrew almost watches. He doesn't run off the road there as he goes past Kieran Bailey. And then he starts the long climb back up Duffus Dip. Might not look long, but next time it's a reverse direction meeting, we're not going to try and walk that at night. It's a lot, it's a steep hill, it's a long steep hill, all the way from Butchers. It never stops climbing till round about there where Andrew Smith flashes past our screen in first place ahead of Raymond Boyd. And Raymond Boyd really managing to hold on. John Kinman has slipped off this one quite something as we go in towards the hairpin. And the big rover, the three and a half litre rover, just either overcooked its tyres or something else gone a little bit wrong for John. As he leaves the hairpin and heads towards Clark Corner now. He has really 
put that car back to where it should be though. Uh, reliability, pretty good actually. And brakes were a big thing if, if memory of it kind of recalls. Uh, they was trying to get the thing to maintain its brakes. But now he comes through. Butchers in lead Andrew Smith, car number 73. And the camera making it look a little bit brighter than it actually is. And Raymond Boyd also charges in towards McIntyre's. Raymond's definitely not letting Andrew off the hook just now. The gap round about 1.3, 1.4 seconds on the timing screens as they go across the line now. Looks a bit bigger than that now, actually. As we go back into the pack, that's Bruce Mitchell going through. Look at Alistair Bapti and Stuart Orban both flirting with the edge of the track there in the exit kerb. And also flirting a bit with disaster as William Conway comes through and takes himself down the back straight. Michael Longstaff will be the next one in position. William Curry ahead of that. And there's Martin Ramsey, the first of the XRs. Had to believe the XRs are now in the classics as, oh, I've got to see Andrew Smith took a whole heap of uh, bravery as he come into view at Clarks. It looks like he actually went in a little bit too hot there. And that's shaking him a bit because Raymond Boyd well with the bit between his teeth. Now Smith starting to slide about an awful lot in that Morgan. You can see that caught him off guard a bit there. A big slap off the head inside the car. That's what we would call a tank slap if it was a motorbike. But look at... This XR2 at the top of Duffy's dip, and oh, Andrew Smith almost has to come to a halt there. That really shouldn't be on the racetrack, mate. You know want to get that onto the gravel trap or the pit lane as quickly as you possibly can. And that has really brought Raymond Boyd right back into this one as they go down towards the hairpin. Raymond tries the outside. Can he do it? Yes, he can. He goes round the outside, but Smithy's hanging tough on the inside. It's going to be a drag race towards Clark Corner, and the Morgan looks like it's just, just got the legs on the Porsche as they disappear from our sight and we're going to see them coming back into view here as Michael Longstaff comes through and has a moment going through Clarks and Andrew Smith manages to hold the position this time although he was a little bit more reserved coming into Clark that time than on the previous lap. Let's hope that slow XR2 has got himself off the circuit to a place of safety because that was pretty close at the top of Duffy's dip the last time round when Andrew Smith almost drove into the back of that station. He basically stopped car on the track. Michael Longstaff gets the Morgan Plus 8 treatment and he says very, very wide there. Not, oh, oh, that let Raymond Boyd come through, but there was a sharp intake of breath. One would imagine from Boyd in the driver's seat of that Porsche as the flames lick out the back of the Porsche as he goes over the crest of the hill. And once again, another lap under the belt and this is now the final lap this is where it really counts what can Raymond Boyd do in the baby blue Porsche can he get ahead of that Morgan plus eight or has Andrew Smith got enough in the tank to hold Raymond at bay as they head round towards Clark Corner Smithy just now just dabbling a little bit on the brakes not wanting to push it too hard because it's so easy to make a mistake that he's using a lot of kerb on exit of Clark and Raymond looked towards the inside going down the back straight but thinks better off it as they come through the chicane. Smith, he's had a few slides here, he's had a few warnings earlier on in the race and prior laps, but this time it's very much cool and in control. He covers the entrance to McIntyre's, and if anything, it's going to take a mistake now from Andrew Smith because Raymond Boyd not close enough as they come onto the main street, and Andrew Smith absolutely pinpoint coming through those last sequence of corners, accelerates over the crest of the hill, and Andrew Smith takes a victory as a guest in the big 4 litre Morgan Plus 8 he'll be absolutely delighted with that one Raymond Boyd comes home a very good second in the Porsche 911 with John Kimmond, Mario Ferrari and Bruce Mitchell running out the top 5 great stuff from the classics and we'll be back more we'll be back with more just in a couple of minutes with race number 2 
Race number two for the Scottish Classic Sports and Saloons here at Knock Hill Racing Circuit. Anti-clockwise for the SMRC this weekend. And look at this, race number one. Well, it was very wet, very, very wet, in fact. Race number two it was nice and dry. The sun is out. This is what the racing drivers love. A little bit of mixture throughout the course of the day for these chaps. And let's see how they get on here after race number one. It was a thriller right towards the end. Andrew Smith managing to just hold off Raymond Boyd. What's going to happen in race number two? The grid, Raymond Boyd on... Well, Andrew Smith on pole from Raymond Boyd. <laughs> we should get that right straight away. Uh, Andrew Smith from Raymond Boyd. We've, we've talked with these guys a lot. John Kinmond also, another very fast man, dribbled off, unfortunately, towards the end of that race number one. But you cannot discount John Kinmond with Mario Ferrari, Bruce Mitchell, Alistair Bapti, who... Well, I did see he'd woken up during that first race. He didn't wake up for qualifying. He kind of woke up halfway through race number one. What could the Bapti man do in this race? And there was an amendment, actually, to race number one, the, the, the final results. Car 63 was reclassified. So it was taken out, then it was reclassified. That was John Kinman. So a bit of something happened in post-race tech. But we'll leave that up to the stewards and the scrutineers to deal with. John Kimmond was re-amended after race number one results. So let's see how this one pans out for us. Bapti goes through with Thorburn and William Conway all rolling up towards the line. And already the lights are on. We've got four lights. We've got five lights. Who'll get the start? Will it be Smithy or Boydie down towards the hairpin? Morgan against Porsche. And look at the Porsche leap forward off the line. A fabulous, fabulous looking start from Raymond Boyd. He got that one well and truly hooked up, but the Morgan powers back on the inside. Who's going to be bravest? Raymond Boyd is going to be bravest in this one. As we take a view from William Conway, and he tries to go around outside of Kieran Bailey. Does that? Alistair Bapti's trying to go around outside of him. Stuart Thorburn just ahead of him. The mini he has a little bit of a bouncy, slidey moment there. But he does manage to hold it all together and get through as he heads towards Clark Corner now. On the first lap here, as we head through Clark Corner with the leaders. Raymond Boyd and Andrew Smith with a big gap back to third place. Bruce Mitchell ahead of Mario Ferrari and Alistair Bapti. A bit of surprise in the voice here. Great start from Bruce Mitchell in this one. He would be absolutely delighted with that one. Leading Class B and third on the road in his Lotus Europa. As the leaders come in towards McIntyre's. Raymond Boyd, E-Class leader on the road and overall here as we go up off his dip chased by Andrew Smith who unfortunately is just a guest this weekend but wouldn't it be good to see Andrew Smith giving us a full campaign next year as he goes down towards the hip and, and he is hounding Raymond Boyd here one thing Andrew will be pretty happy about in this race one would imagine is the lack of spray he would have been absolutely drenched after that first race and he'll be pretty happy that in race number two the sun is out as as will be Bruce Mitchell. He'll not, not won't have had to change the tyres. Bruce will have the dry tyres on still as he heads towards Clark's. And look at this, so Alistair Bapti behind Mario Ferrari as he heads towards Clark Corners. A lock-up from Raymond Boyd on the way in there. Raymond Boyd locks that one up, but uh, doesn't really affect him too much. As we see Mario Ferrari dicing with the edge of the track, and that's let Bapti come through on the inside. Bapti and Ferrari both battling out for A-class honours. And remember, Bapti, a man going for the championship, he needs to finish. I mean, he needs to finish ahead of Mario Ferrari. The championship points are key for him. He can't wrap it up this weekend, but he certainly can wrap it up next weekend as they come through the top of Duff's dip. The leaders are gone. There's Bruce Mitchell interview there. Then we've got Bapti. Bapti on a charge. Look how much he's gapped Mario Ferrari. And that Duffy's dip complex reverse direction is great fun. It really is massive commitment. You can't see where you're going until you're basically over the crest of the apex onto the straight. So it's a big bit of hope and faith that you know where the road goes as it unfolds over the crest of the hill. Car 49, Raymond Boyd in the Porsche 911. The turbocharged car now heads towards Clark Corner. Big, big burst of flame out the back of that. Andrew Smith won't want the Morgan to be too close to that or it might... Yeah, we might bend one of the <laughs> little fenders in the front. Eat it up a bit too much as they go down the back straight towards the chicane now. Big gap back behind these two chaps as well. The next man, Bruce Mitchell in the Lotus Europa, already quite some distance off the back as Raymond Boy driving this Porsche very well because the Morgan should be a bit more agile. He locks up a wheel going into McIntyre, so it shows you just how hard Boydie is willing to push this car. 
as they come onto the top of the street. Here is sideways there, and that's going to hurt his momentum. And here comes Andrew Smith, winding up the big four litre plus eight Morgan as he comes onto the street. But that Porsche, once it picks its heels up, that's got a good bit of speed underneath it as he defends on the way in towards the hairpin. And Raymond Boyd, well, he knows how to defend and lead and win from the front. Can he put up with the pressure here? from Andrew Smith as they come through Clark Corner already about to go a lap down one of the XR2s there that'll be William Curry as he comes into chicane does he stay out the way not really Raymond Boyd and Andrew Smith really having to come to almost a, a grinding halt to get through the chicane there but they manage to dive past through Butchers and Boyd he goes in there a bit too quick doesn't he again another lock up from Raymond he's going to have to watch if he flat spots that front right tyre that's going to start snatching all the time every time he hits the brakes and tries to get the car slowed down over the crest of the hill under the Beetson's building supply bridge. They go. And fastest man on circuit just now as it stands, Raymond Boyd, 57.9 seconds. So can he go faster than that? Let's see. Exit off the hairpin. Laps ticking away. Flames licking at the back of the Porsche. And Clark Corner, the exit off the cloud, starting to gather above Knock Hill itself, but it doesn't look like the threat of rain is imminent. So we're okay as they come through through the chicane where lots of people have had excursions you can see through the course of the day and in towards McIntyre's. Massive, massive pressure now from Andrew Smith on Raymond Boyd. And this is where we're going to see the makeup of Raymond Boyd. Has he got enough mental capacity to deal with this intense pressure that Andrew Smith is throwing at him? As further back down, William Curry gets it the way of Ferrari and Thorburn, and they have both been well and truly bapted in this one. Alistair Bapti in the little Fiat X19 is on it as he goes over the top of Duff at his dip. And Alistair really has got good pace in race number two as we come through the hairpin once again. Porsche and Morgan plus eight. Class E and a guest class, but he would be in the same class as Raymond Boyd. Andrew Smith as he head towards Clark Corner. And really, where do you see Andrew Smith having a go? Well, he's thinking about it on the way down the back straight there, but you can only imagine the hairpin will be the main place. And Raymond Boyd looks like he's got that well and truly covered off with a good bit of speed from the exit of Duff has dipped the last corner towards that hairpin, and then he's quite happy to defend it on the way in. So it's going to be a tricky, troublesome one for Andrew Smith to try and do anything else here as they go through the right-hander of Leslie's and over the crest of the hill and head towards that. Once again, the Beatson's Boring Supply Bridge and clicking off another lap here at Knock Hill under sunnier skies than race number one. Again, Boydy defends on the way in. Raymond got that one well and truly covered off again and he, he manages to hit his apex every time. Eventually, but every time he does get an apex, and that's what's key is stopping Andrew Smith doing any cutback and getting underneath him as they head towards Clark Corner. They're about to put William Curry another lap down in that white XR2. Martin Ramsey leads the XR battle just now, and there's a yellow flag there because Michael Longstaff's had an excursion. He's going to rejoin the track. Oh, and Raymond Boy goes off the track as well. So things getting a little bit, uh, a little bit nasty at the front there. A few mistakes creeping in as Longstaff comes back on. Maybe Raymond just caught out a little bit by the yellow flag getting waved there. He didn't actually go off. He just took the straight-on route through the chicane. Is that number 25 XR2? It really is so slow in the main straight there. Blue flags are waving for him. As we watch it come past here, Duncan O'Neill passes him and Michael Longstaff now pass. And it just doesn't sound right as they come in towards the open once again. Raymond Boyd holds at B, Andrew Smith as they head towards Clark Corner. Well and truly getting down towards the business end of this race as Martin Ramsey, man who leads the XR battle, comes through. Class E, top man just now, and front runner race leader is Raymond Boyd as the <laughs> floppy markers are now all over the circuit down at the chicane. Leading Class B, we have got Bruce Mitchell. Class A is led by the Bapti man himself, man, the reigning champion, and man going for another back-to-back -back championships, Alistair Bapti. And we don't have any Class C runners here this weekend. As up underneath the Beatson's building supply bridge comes that man, Raymond Boyd again, as they go past Martin Ramsey. And Raymond now started to put together a good string of laps. After that little mishap at the chicane, 
as Legner's really refocused him again. Made that little mistake, he's got it back together. He has just set the fastest lap of the race with a 57.8 second lap. And that is a new circuit and class record for the Scottish Classic Sports and Saloon Car Championship for Raymond Boyd. So the baby blue Porsche, the 911 turbocharged flyer, is the fastest car around Knock Hill in the Classics. And today he's leading again as he come over the crest of the hill. He's under huge, huge pressure now though. Andrew Smith is hunting him down as they go in towards the hairpin. Boydie again on the inside, holds that one. That's his position. William Conway now heads towards Clark Corner, flies past the XR2 there. That XR2 not running very well at all, though. A little bit off uh, performance, shall we say. And the Mini, massive commitment as he comes through Clark Corner there, William Conway. The Mini Clubman GT. The 1380cc car has through the chicane over the bits of floppy bollard which Raymond would have deposited himself when he took that little scenic route and through McIntyre's corner things will be starting to twitch inside that number 49 car because there's not long to go in this race and he's put up with this much pressure for the entire race as William Conway looks in his mirrors for these two cars to come flashing past they shouldn't be too far away you can see him looking in the mirror all the way up the main straight there he's expecting Boydie and Smith to come past his Raymond on the inside William stays well out, lets Raymond go past, and Andrew Smith will power past on the exit at the corner. There we go. So, good classy bit of driving from William Comey there. Didn't really do anything that was going to upset the leaders. And the Swift tune sticker on the dash there. That man, Nicky Swift, synonymous with tuning minis over the years. And William Comey doing the minis proud in Scotland just now. As we go down the back straight, such is the pace of Raymond Boyd and Andrew Smith. They are just putting oceans of time into everybody else Bruce Mitchell some 45 seconds further down the road as they come over the crest of the hill Raymond Boyd he's managed to put up with the pressure it's been absolutely classy classic stuff from Raymond Boyd as he crosses the line he'll be absolutely delighted with how it is going just now William Comey does go through the shot there and this is the final lap Boydie if anything he's got a nice buffer as they come through Clark Corner now down the back straight Andrew Smith has got to throw absolutely everything at him on this last lap as William Comey also comes through in the mini but we want to see where these two guys are they're at the chicane now Boyd first apex second apex he won't have time to look in his mirror through here it's so fast and so flowing he gets back to the apex of McIntyre's. It's looking pretty good for Raymond Boyd just now as he goes up Duff his step. He's got one more corner to do. He's got to get a good exit from here, which he does do. Raymond can almost smell that checkered flag now over the crest of the hill. Smith he pulls out, but he doesn't have anything in the horsepower for him. Raymond Boyd takes the victory from Andrew Smith and Bruce Mitchell. Great bit of driving towards the end there. Alistair Bapti comes home in fourth from Mario Ferrari, Stuart Thorburn, William Conway in the mini. Martin Ramsey and Michael Longstaff.